Hey, this is Beth, the Sweet Urban Living Lady, and I want to share with you some things that I've learned through the years to help my family, my kids, and now my grandkids with having a healthy back-to-school school year. I have for you today nine tips on how to help your kids have a healthy school experience. And I have a bonus tip at the end to share about some healthy snack ideas for your school kids as well. And don't be surprised if you don't enjoy liking these healthy snacks or some of the tips that I have for you as well. So tip number one, what is my first tip that I put into practice for my family, for my kids when it was back to school time? So one of the things that happens over the summer is kids, uh, families go on vacation, they um, go do spend the night parties. It's a lot of fun. It's time to kind of breathe, relax, and we let our schedules go. So my first tip is get your kids and yourself back on track by making sure you're getting a good night's sleep. So maybe you've already started the school year and you didn't transition of going, hey, let's make sure we set our regular bedtime. Let's make sure we're in bed at a certain time. If you haven't done that, be sure to do it because having a regular bedtime helps get our kids well rested so that when they go to school, they're able to pay attention, they're able to sit, they're not as wiggly, you know, things like that. Now, my second tip is kind of similar to that first tip. Maybe you set that bedtime. Maybe you said, okay, school year's back and we're going to make sure that all our kids are in bed at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, depending on what age your child is. And it may be different. So like one of my kids is a night owl. And so setting a bedtime at 8 p.m. for her never worked. She was what we called a 10 p.m. baby. At 10 o'clock, she woke up. She wasn't going to sleep. So, and one of my kids, he would put himself to bed at like 8 o'clock. I didn't even have to tell him to go to bed. So all kids are different. But one of the things that you can do if just saying, hey, it's time to go back to school and we've got to get our schedules back on, if that's not working, make sure you're helping your kids and yourself reset your circadian rhythm. So our circadian rhythm is our natural clock that tells us in the morning it's time to wake up when the sun comes up and in the evening it's time to go to sleep. But because of our um, spending so much time indoors or we, we do so much screen time, um, even kids get on uh, TV, iPads, smart devices. And so the blue light that's coming from those devices interrupts our circadian rhythm. So here for tip number two, I've actually kind of got a bonus with tip number three. So, but for tip number two, go outside and watch the sunset. Go outside in the evening before, you know, before it, it really starts to get dark, but the sun is starting to go down and watch the sunset because that helps tell our bodies to produce the melatonin that we need so that when it's bedtime, we are readjusted and we're actually relaxing and getting ready for a good night's sleep. So number three, like I said, kind of goes with number two is when you're watching the sun go down, Make sure you're barefooted. Take your shoes off, get in the grass, get on the ground, get in some dirt. Let your body reconnect to the earth because some people call this grounding. Some people call it earthing. But no matter what you call it, going and walking on the grass, on the ground, on the dirt of the earth, it helps to pull like negative energy out of the body and it rejuvenates good energy in the body. So when we are barefoot and watching the sun come down, we're getting an added bonus. We're setting our circadian rhythms. We're allowing our bodies to discharge negative energy out and to rejuvenate. So we get sleepy, we have a good night's sleep, we wake up refreshed. If you haven't tried that yourself, try it. It can really help. Um, I went on a cruise <laughs> one time and um, we traveled. We actually flew to Spain and got on the cruise ship there. And so my circadian rhythm was like crazy out of whack. 
And then because it was a cruise where I had actually earned the trip with a company I worked for, we were on an inside room and you would think, oh, inside, that's no problem there because it was really dark. But because it was so dark, it actually messed with me even more. So um, I think it was like the second night of the cruise, maybe the third night of the cruise, I was like, we've got to go watch the sun. We've got to go watch the sun go down so that my body gets back into its natural rhythm because I had messed that up by crossing so many time zones in a short period. And sure enough, going out and um, watching the sun go down helped tremendously. We also had an aromatherapy diffuser with us, a tiny travel one that had like a light on it. And it was such a bright, <laughs> such a bright light that I took one of my husband's dress socks and put it over it so that I had a little bit of light in the room to help me so I didn't have such a, you know, the sense deprivation was just not good. So try all kinds of tricks. There are different things that you can do to help make sure that you're getting arrested. So another bonus tip that I'm throwing in is some kids do better if they have a noise machine going in the background. Other kids like me, I was like, no noise, no noise. I don't want any noise at all, right? But some kids like to have that white noise or the sound of the ocean going. It helps them, their thoughts to not be monkey thoughts and to stay on target so that they're able to rest, relax, and go to sleep. So another thing, tip number four we want to talk about is making sure that kids are putting away their um, smart devices, their electronic devices, their gaming systems. Now, this is going to be touchy because I know because a lot of times we use our devices right up until bedtime, but ideally, the best thing you can do is put those away two hours before bedtime because they are emitting that blue light. It messes with that circadian rhythm, and we want to reestablish that, and if we are on our smart devices, even if you went outside and watched the sun go down, it might still mess up that circadian rhythm, so... So put those away, okay? And I, not just put them away, put them at least 20 feet away from the bed because even when they're off, it's still emitting that uh, electromagnetic field, the EMFs. And so that can really mess with our sleep. So sleep is really important. We've got several tips on what we can do to help us um, reset get our bedtime back on track, make sure we're getting a good night's sleep so that we wake up refreshed in the morning. The next thing I'm going to suggest is cutting the crap. And what I mean by that is I'm not just talking about having good healthy bowel movements, although that is something I probably should talk about. Um, all naturopaths like to talk about poop. Sorry. Um, but if we're having good bowel movements, then that means we're our, a healthy digestive system makes for a healthy brain, right? So when I mean cut the crap, I'm actually talking about the acronym C-R-A-P. And that stands for chemicals, refined sugars and refined flours, artificial ingredients, and har harmful preservatives. We don't need carbonation. We don't need artificial sweeteners. Nobody does, kids or adults. We don't need uh, high fructose corn syrup. This is crap, and it messes with our entire body. It weakens our immune system. It leads to poor digestion. It leads to poor bowel movements. And when we're constipated or have diarrhea, we can't think clearly. I mean, that's just, that's just one of those. You just don't think clearly when your bowels are backed up. And so we as adults want to have healthy bowel movements as well. So lead by example, get the crap out of your own life so that your kids are eating healthy as well. Getting crap out also helps to not have foggy brain. So there's so many benefits to getting crap out. Carbonated drinks, sodas, not good. Read your labels, parents. Read those labels because a lot of times the things that we're putting in our processed packaged foods cause so many problems with our nervous system. They build inflammation in the body. It makes our brains be on fire. That's a real thing. Having a brain on fire means we can't think clearly. So if we're feeling ourselves, if our kids are eating a lot of food, 
filled with crappy stuff, crappy ingredients, then they're not going to be as healthy as they should be. So please get the crap out and look for healthy snacks. Now, like I said, stay tuned to the end because at the end, I'm going to share some healthy snacks that you may not have thought of. I'm, some of them I'm sure you have, but some of them you may not have thought of. So stay, stay with me to the end so that I can share those healthy tips with you. Now, one of the things that goes along with that, um, getting the crap out, is make sure, parents, that you are going to the grocery store, that you are planning your trip, that you're planning to succeed, and planning healthy breakfast and dinners. Maybe your kids eat uh, school lunches. Maybe you pack their lunches. But what you want to do is make sure you plan ahead Kids need healthy proteins in the morning to stabilize their blood sugar levels. They don't need sugary cereals. Let me pause right there. I just had the thought of a um, particular person I worked with who um, ate half a box of cereal for breakfast. My husband, when he was a kid, um, he ate half a box of cereal for breakfast in the morning before going to school and half a box of cereal when he got home. And when he got to school, he'd be so hungry that he's hitting the snack machine. This was a teenager, you know, but he had hit the snack machine to get some jerky or something, some protein. So start your day right. Start your day. Sometimes, you know, and again, just like one of my kids is a night owl and one of them's a morning person wakes up at the crack of dawn and I have three kids and I have eight grandkids and they're all different. Make sure you're meeting each child's needs. So I'm not one personally. I don't like to get up and eat breakfast first thing in the morning. That's hard for me. I have to kind of get up and do things, wake up, and then I eat breakfast later. So some kids like to do that too. But because of our schedules, we've got to get them on a the school bus. Work with your kids. Work with your school. Make sure you're getting what they need for them so that they can have it. And that's what I mean by plan your shopping trip. Plan, you know, make sure you go shopping. Um, I actually like to go shopping a couple of times a week because my husband and I eat veggies and fruits. And so we're buying it fresh when we go twice a week rather than when I was growing up. Um, my mom always went to the grocery store once a week. We went on Saturdays and did the grocery shopping, and that's fine. A lot of people work Monday through Friday, or they work five or six days a week, and they only have one day, or they only have evenings to do the grocery shopping, and that might be you. So make sure whenever your grocery shopping occurs that you are planning ahead. You're putting, I mean, we have apps these days where even the grocery stores, you can make a list on your app. When you think of it, pull up your your app or make your list if you still like doing handwritten notes, whatever works for you, but make that list of protein-rich foods, <clears throat> Uh, healthy carbs. We do need healthy carbs and healthy fats. So like avocado toast with a good healthy bread and avocados can be very beneficial. Now I said, watch your refined flour. So white breads are crap. Um, some wheat breads are crap. So a lot of times I like to use, get things like Ezekiel bread. I actually make my own bread. I make sourdough breads from scratch at home. So, but I know that's not an option for everybody, but make sure you're getting foods that are enjoyable for your kids and that, you know, provide the nutrients that they need. And planning ahead it's one of the best tips I can give you. So maybe that's one of those things. Leave me a comment. Would you like to see um, a healthy grocery shopping list for yourself, for your kids? Is that something that you would be interested in? Maybe that's something we can work on in a future episode. Tip number eight is make sure that your kids' backpacks are fitted properly. That may not seem like anything to do with health, but it actually is because a backpack that doesn't fit the child or doesn't fit well can actually put a lot of strain on the child's back and neck and it can actually cause them to hunch and slump and one of the things I just did was a, a presentation for one of the schools I teach for on the, the heart and spine connection and how spine health can affect heart health. And I know we're talking about kids, but we're trying to grow our kids into the healthiest adults they can be. 
So posture is important. We want to teach them to sit up straight, be open, and all that kind of stuff. But if we're putting a backpack on our kids full of heavy books, full of things that they need for school, and it doesn't fit, fit well, or it the straps are not fit properly, that can be a problem. So the, I am including a sizing guide for children's backpacks. It's um, by thoughtco.com. And I really like this uh, article because it just gives you the, this is what size should fit. This is how big the straps should be. And I know we shop for backpacks based on what our kids want to, you know, whatever character, whatever uh, colors, whatever it is that appeals to them. And of course, we want them to be happy with their backpacks. But keep in mind, fit is the number one important to get the right fitting backpack. Fit is number one when choosing a backpack and making sure that the straps are tightened properly so that they're not you know, going backwards, <laughs> falling down because it's so heavy. That's important as well. Tip number nine is healthy supplement choices. So I've raised three kids. I now have eight kids and I raised three kids using herbs. I'm an herb lady and I worked in an herb shop, owned an herb shop, and I teach about herbs. Um, so I like herbs and I like using herbs to supplement and support and help my family be strong. So one of the main things I like to use to keep my kids healthy for back to school or me healthy when it's winter time, fall, whatever it is, is a product called VS-C, VSC by Nature Sunshine. And it works so well at helping the immune system stay strong. You can get it in liquid form or capsule form. It's gentle and it can be taken every day as a preventative. Both of my girls took a job in daycare centers when they graduated and going to college and things like that. And my kids didn't get sick. We, we used herbs. We did things naturally. They didn't normally get sick. But when they were around those kids who were getting sick all the time, they started getting sick all the time too. So we reverted back to what we already knew of making sure they were taking VSC by Nature Sunshine every day to help prevent them from getting sick. So whether you're a mom, you're a student, you're a teacher, I highly recommend this for my teachers as well because it helps them not get sick because y'all are around the, you know, people are coming in to school sick even even though they we uh, really want them to stay home. We are encouraging you to stay home if you're having symptoms. Sometimes kids get to school, they didn't tell mom or dad they weren't feeling good and the next thing you know, we're having to call mom or dad to come get us. So VSC is really great for that. And I loved to keep elderberry on hand as well. Sam McCall elderberry is one of my favorites. You can get it in liquid, it sort of tastes good. Kids like it. It also helps build the immune system and can help knock out any kind of virus, bacteria, or thing like that, whatever's going around. Another supplement that I like to recommend is uh, essential fatty acids. So you can choose a fish source, uh, like Nordic Naturals has a fish source, um, and Barleen's has a flax source. So I've included links for that below of different things that you can choose for your kids. But fish oils help the brain. But flax oil, the essential fatty acids help the brain. They help the eyes. They help um, with learning, reading ability, spelling. They help with behavior and attention as well. And they can even help reduce hyperactivity uh, in kids, even aggression. So essential fatty acids, it's like the insulation around a wire. It helps insulate our nervous system so that we're not going crazy all the time. But they also, we need this for good brain development, for our eyes to be healthy, and for our immune systems to be healthy as well. So this is something I include on my list and for my kids and grandkids too. Another thing that I recommend is making sure, remember we talked about getting the crap out of our diet, but we want to as well include good healthy foods. We want to make sure that we're digesting our foods properly. So we want to make sure that our kids are, what they're eating is being broken down 
so that the waste can be eliminated and the nutrients can be extracted, absorbed, and utilized. So digestive enzymes can help with that. Um, I like uh, Enzymetica. Uh, Kids Digest. So I'm sharing a lot of different brands. And I'm going to kind of take a sidetrack right here and just say, because I owned an herb shop, worked at an herb shop, I recognize that there are a lot of great brands out there. And so I'm sharing different brands with you because sev many of them are good. So I like, you may find another brand that you like better, and that's great. But these are high quality brands. I know they work. They work for me and my family. They work for my clients. They work for my customers. And that's why I recommend these. Um, next, after digestive enzymes, I would recommend a good probiotic. Probiotics are very important. Probiotics, um, the bacteria in our gut, help to break down the food. Now, we don't want to overrun the bad bacteria, and that happens when we eat a lot of crap foods, sugary foods, refined foods. The uh, bad bacteria grow and proliferate, and that can cause yeast infections, it can cause foggy brain, it can cause all kinds of things, and our kids suffer from this as well. So getting a good probiotic in so that the bad bacteria don't outnumber the good bacteria, and so that the bacteria are helping to break down the food and helping you to absorb the nutrients from your food is definitely a bonus for our kids. Thanks for sticking with me. We've only got a few more suggestions on herbs, and then I'm going to share my healthy snack tips, my bonus healthy snacks. So next is vitamin C. I like Nordic Natural for kids. We know that vitamin C helps boost the immune system. So that's another something to have on hand. Nature Sunshine Focus Attention. Now, focus attention, we mentioned the essential fatty acids and how they help the brain. Focus attention helps as well. And this is one that I really recommend for kids who, they get to school and they just have a hard time focusing or paying attention. Maybe they're not really good at sitting down for long periods of time. Some of our kids are kinesthetic learners. They learn when they are moving, and yet we send them to school and we want them to sit in their seats. Now, not all schools, not all classrooms, not all teachers, but that's the norm. The norm is go to school, go to a classroom, sit down, don't move around, don't talk to your neighbor, and that actually turns off learning for some of our students. I actually asked my husband one time, I said, so if I were to tell you to <clears throat> sit on your hands, and pay attention to me and not move, what would happen? And his answer was, all I can think about is not moving. All I can think about is that my hands are tucked under my legs. I can't hear a word you're saying. So one day, because I'm a mom and a grandma who believes in testing out what I give to my kids, so I always taste whatever it is, whatever food it is, does it taste good, whatever supplement it is, is it something that they can uh, chew, swallow, whatever? So I always try. So I tried focus attention. I don't have ADD or ADHD. But I will tell you that after taking it, I was going to a seminar. And it was like I had laser focus that day. I was, I was like able to really pay attention. And I don't have trouble paying attention. So I can attest, not only does it help um, my kids who needed it for a short while, I can attest it helped me as well. And the last supplement that I'm going to recommend is uh, Natural Vitality's Calm Gummies. These gummies have magnesium in them. And when you need your kids to calm down, maybe have a better night's sleep, maybe the watching the sunset just helps some, but not a lot, whatever it is, these Calm Gummies can really help with calming down, they help calm down the nervous system, settle things down. They're very good for the nerves. So those are my suggestions on herbs, and thanks so much for staying with me. Bonus tips for healthy snacks. Have you thought about trying avocado and turkey slices? Now, when I say turkey slices, remember, I said get the crap out. So don't go to the deli and get deli meat that has sulfites and sulfates and additives and preservatives. Get a clean uh, turkey, maybe even get some turkey yourself and, and uh, 
and roast it one night for dinner and have some the next day. But turkey slices or chicken slices with avocado is a great healthy snack. Bananas and almond butter, very good healthy snack. Um, apple slices and peanut butter. So if your kid has a nut allergy and they can't do peanuts, but maybe they can do almonds, then do the almond butter. Another healthy snack is cottage cheese and fruit. There are a lot of fruits that you can pair with cottage cheese. It has protein in it and fruit goes with it very, very well. Greek yogurt. Now, when you're doing yogurt, read those labels. A lot of the yogurts that are geared to our kids today and even us as adults have added sugars, have added flavors, have things that are crap in them, and we're actually negating the good that they do. So instead of getting flavored yogurts, get Greek yogurt and add your own honey and add fruit. Either or, maybe both to get a little bit sweet taste. Do it to taste. It's really good. And I know some people are like, well, I don't like yogurt. But the more you try it, the better you'll like it. Some people even use liquid stevia to help sweeten their yogurt. But honey, liquid stevia, those things are great. And the added bonus of using natural local honey is natural raw local honey actually helps with the respiratory system. So and it can help avoid allergies and sinus issues. It's really good. It's something good to have on hand. Another thing that you can do is you can do power balls, protein balls. You can get and make your own power balls. Sometimes you can find them in stores. But these are ideas where you're giving your kids a good healthy snack and you're giving them food that's nutritious and you're helping them get back on track to have a healthy school year. And when you're healthy, you can enjoy school more. You can enjoy life more. Thanks for joining me. Um, like I said, leave some comments below on what did you like about this? What are some other tips that you might like for yourself or for your kids to live a healthy, sweet living, sweet urban living life? Bye.